All right. Good morning, Hoxie, Kansas. Good morning, America. This is Justin at Seeking Context, and I am speaking with Carl Pratt, who is the uh, director of the Sheridan County Community Foundation. He is the CEO of the Main Street Arts Council in Hoxie, Kansas. He is a voice and music coach, and I'm under the impression that he runs the town of Hoxie. <laughs> and I'm going to find out how he juggles all of those various activities and as uh, and learn more about you know, his approach to leadership in uh, you know bringing rural communities into the future. And so it's great to speak with you, Carl. Thank Thanks you. for agreeing to talk with me. Absolutely, thank you. And uh, so what I thought I'd start out by asking is just tell me about a day in the life of Carl Pratt in Hoxie, Kansas. <laughs> so, what are all of these things that you do? <laughs> well, so a days definitely vary from day to day. Um, but, you know, typically my, my main job is with the Sheridan County Community Foundation. And um, at the moment, I work, have been working part time running that as the board liaison. But I have good news. Effective January 1, I will be going full time um, with the foundation and running the foundation as well as continuing to do economic development for Sheridan County. So I'm kind of extending that hat a bit. But at present, um, I work about five hours a day with the foundation, mm -hmm. um, you know, 25 hours a week. So schedule's kind of flexible at the moment, which has been nice, but I'm definitely ready to get back to some full-time structure. I will throw that out there. But <laughs> um, so with the foundation, you know, it's um, we, we just came off of our um, annual match month challenge campaign, which I know you're familiar with, of course, um, in Logan County. And um, that was a, a success. We exceeded our goal of raising um, at least 50,000 locally to be matched by the Hanson Foundation, Dane G. Hanson Foundation. We mm -hmm. actually raised about 68 locally. So excited to have that as another success. But um, so day to day, you know, just with the foundation activities, programs, um, definitely have stepped into more economic development stuff in the past couple of years when COVID hit, um, you know, making sure our businesses were supported as best as possible, getting resources and information out there. Um, but yeah, so about, you know, five hours foundation. And then in the afternoons, I teach my private voice and piano lessons. And at the moment, I have about 22, 23 students. And so those are wow. split across Monday through Thursday usually 3.45 until 6 or 7, just depending on how the night is. And and then if I have any energy or uh, juice left and things to do, you know, arts council work, um, which during the year isn't as much. We we really have kind of slowed things down with the, the, the with coming um, with the pandemic and then coming continuing to come through it and focus mainly on our summer theater festival, which we can talk about later. But um, still have a few items to work on throughout the year with that. So. Yeah. There's a lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah. De oh. And then, you know, on the off time, it's definitely thinking about, okay, what do I need to work on now? There's lots of emails that I'll send to myself at night, you know, do this, do that, or I'm reading or researching different things. And so it, uh, you know, the day gets filled with you send yourself emails anything and everything. Oh gosh. So many emails. Yes. That's a <laughs> There's lots of emails from me and I currently, <laughs> I guess we should add, I also have been helping with our local chamber group. So I, I currently have foundation email, personal email, chamber email. Um, let's see. Oh, my family and I are running a, a, a Airbnb. So I've got an email account for that. So <laughs> lots of email. You could say I'm addicted to email. Okay. All right. <laughs> so that's a big part of my day is reading and responding and writing emails. It's kind yeah. of one of my favorite things to do. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll try and start topic by topic. So Sounds good. Uh, let's go with the community foundation. Um, you know, so I just took a job as the director of the Logan County Community yes, Foundation. Congrats. And, uh, but one of the things I was wondering before, and maybe you can answer, what is a community foundation? <laughs> Well, so, you know, I prepared with the questions and I did, <laughs> I did look up the definition, but, you know, more or less the community foundation is a public charity that is often um, set up for grant making purposes or specific purposes, missions, that kind of thing. Um, but all about, you know, improving the lives um, and quality of life of a community or geographical area. So in our instance, of course, being a county community, a county community foundation, we are um, focused on the betterment of those living and visiting Sheridan County now and into the future. So, and, our, and a big part of our programming right now is grant making. Um, you know, we, as you know, are as well out here in Western Kansas are beneficiaries of, again, the Dane G. Hansen Foundation's amazing generosity. And so we're able to grant out $100,000 a year 
um, to our organizations that are working on projects and events and activities that, again, are all focused on improving the lives and quality of life out here in Western Kansas. Right. And so what types of projects are those? What types of grants have, do you see come in? Uh, you know, we have a wide variety to date. And, you know, the last six years, we've been able to give out about, I think, just over $620,000 to our local organizations wow. from from those Hanson funds. And, you know, we, we do have a, a variety of organizations, whether they're actually set up as 501c3s or just volunteer groups, um, you know, different things. But, um, you know, we've had a lot of beautification projects, a lot of um, improvements, parks, our, our recreation. Arts Council, of course, has been a beneficiary helping with theater projects and supplies for different events and activities, the schools, the hospital, um, you know, even just the, the city and some of the, uh, we had a tree replacement grant, we would help plant some new trees and, you know, just again, anything and everything that fits under community improvements and, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, and so for somebody that wants, they want to do something here in Hoxie, they can go to your website. How do they apply to be uh, part of this or learn what they need to do in order to apply for some of these funding? Absolutely. So yeah, we do have a website. It's uh, growsheridancounty.org. Mm -hmm. And then you can navigate to the grants page and read about the, the A.G. Hansen Community Fund, which is, again, that's that big fund that we've been giving out um, the last several years. That's our only grant fund at the moment. But um, you can continue through there to the actual application form. And um, applications are accepted on a monthly basis. It has been always the first day of the month um, to then be reviewed in that month. They are changing. So effective, here's a new note, effective 2022 application deadlines will be the last day of the month and then to be reviewed in that next month there following. But you can just, yeah, you can go online to the website there. You can also look at all of our past grants that we've given out. We've got cool. everything built in with um, when they were given out, how much to whom and for what the project was. So always trying to keep that updated. Um, it's also just ideas to see what's, you know, what has happened. And, um, but yeah, certainly can go there. You can always email uh, me at carlpratt.sccf at gmail.com. If you have any questions, um, cool. we'll certainly happy to get you connected to resources to apply because we want applicants to apply to that fund. So. Right. So do you still have any money this year or like, but you've got money for January? Yes. Yeah. So, well, I mean, currently for, yeah, going into 2022, we have, I think about 80,000 that we have available still to give out maybe 80, 85 even. So um, there's money. So send, right. put applications in y'all. All right, cool. Uh, well, and how did you get involved with the community foundation? What's the sort of backstory on your participation? Okay. Well, so I, you know, I'm a Hoxie native. I grew up here and um, graduated from Hoxie High School, class of 2006. Woohoo! <laughs> then I went to Fort Hayes State University in Hayes um, for my education and study vocal performance, hence all the music and stuff. Um, but then I ended up staying at Hayes and um, working full time at the Alumni Association as the communications coordinator. I was a student employee there and I was a student employee there so long that luckily they created a full time position that I was able to, you know, just kind of fit into. But um, stayed there until fall of 2018. And um, my friend Bonnie Cameron, who um, actually founded the Arts Council, the Main Street Arts Council, she had moved back. She's also a Hoxie native, studied music, went to Europe performed opera professionally for about 10 years across Germany and several other countries. She'd been working on trying to bring me back to Hoxie for several years. And she finally was, got me uh, to that point. And it was the right point in my life that I was ready to make a change. And so moved back in um, kind of, I guess, end of summer of 2018. And that was also then at the time, you know, the foundation was ready to try to create a staff position. It had been voluntary, voluntary run the entire time. And um, so they created a part-time position about 15 hours a week. And so I was able to get this position. And um, I, I kind of cobbled that together with um, actually still working remotely for Fort Hayes until the end of 2018, 20 hours a week. And then with help from Bonnie and some of the other like music teachers in the area, I was able to um, start building my teaching studio in Hoxie and St. Francis, Goodland, and Colby. I was traveling all around during the week to um, teach students in all of those locations. And then I also served as the choir director of the Methodist Church Choir in Colby. So 
They had a lot going on. Um, <laughs> those were like. Do you have a driver? <laughs> I know. I wish I did. Man, I like. Yeah, I put on so much mileage. It's so crazy how much I drove that first year, year and a half, and then COVID hit, and you know, and then I didn't have to drive. So it's like, oh right. my gosh, I've got all this gas money now that I didn't, <laughs> that I didn't have before. But you know, that that was intense. I do not recommend anybody do all of that again. Okay. Uh, and in addition to that, of course, was also then running the Arts Council and that whole year led itself then into my first full year with uh, our Main Street Summer Theater Festival, um, which, you know, we produce multiple shows in multiple, multiple towns. And at that time, we'd grown from three to five communities. I was directing two of the shows, plus doing all the marketing and and everything so it was you know 12 14 hour days lots of insomnia mm -hmm. but i don't know i made it through it somehow but i will say i definitely crashed in august after that first summer theater festival so <laughs> right well so that you, you touched a little bit on the main street arts council um so what is that organization so the main street arts council it was founded as i mentioned by bonnie cameron um hoxie native here in 2015 and where it's an arts nonprofit. excuse me dedicated to promoting the arts in Northwest Kansas and providing for arts opportunities to um, citizens of all ages out here in Western Kansas. And of course, it was founded here in Hoxie, but as we've developed our music theater festival, you know, we definitely have a more of a regional approach now and really work on, you know, crossing those county borders and connecting and, and working with more folks as we grow programming and try to even duplicate programming that may not exist in one county, but has, they've got a desire for it. So when I came, um, you know, my, my friend Bonnie Cameron, as I mentioned, had started it. She convinced me to move home and, you know, essentially take over as the executive director, which, you know, a lot of it is part, is a volunteer work, but we have been able the last several years, especially through various programs that we do and that are grant sponsored, um, receive some compensation for that, which is great. So, but um, she had started, of course, doing theater in Hoxie, and then she was teaching in Atwood. So she added a show one summer in Atwood and did Hoxie Atwood. And then that next year added Goodland and was doing Hox those three communities. And that's when I actually did get involved um, remotely from Fort Hayes and kind of helped with some of the marketing and stuff. And I think that was probably really the seed of, okay, you know, this is cool, you know, would like to be a part of this. And and, uh, and, you know, what eventually led me to come home in part, but um, then that next year, of course, 28, or I guess it would be 19 was the official year summer, we added Quinner and Colby when I was here. And so I directed those two shows and she directed the other three. And, you know, it was just a, an amazing program. Um, you know, we rehearsed with the kids and um, yeah, we're just able to, to really grow something big. That's cool. And so are all of these musical performances, is musical theater? What type of shows are these? Yes. For, so for the Main Street Summer Theater Festival, it's all uh, musicals. And um, we do what's called like the junior or kids version of the musicals. So it's the full show, but it's condensed to an hour or a half hour. So we're still doing, you know, full costumes, makeup, staging, you know, sets, all that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, a condensed a bit. So. And so are you got a couple shows coming up in the spring? Um, um, so yeah, well, in this summer, we'll do our, our next festival will be here in the summer okay. and um, we're working on all of those details. So stay tuned for more information in the new year with well, that. And so what about like your, your cast? Like, is it people, kids from Hoxie, adults, children? Who... So it is the fest, the theater festival uh, is limited to youth and we say okay. ages five to 18, but we always, you know, sneak a few younger and maybe some that have graduated in um, as needed, but um yeah, definitely it's focused on youth and, um, sorry, what was the other part? Well, just, are they, is it Hoxie or like, <laughs> oh, sorry. if, if, if people yeah. want to get involved, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, well, yeah, so each town, you know, it, kids from each obviously specific town can be a part of that show. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes have people that travel in that are nearby. So, you know, when we first started at Hoxie shows, we're pulling in Colby kids. And then when we added the Atwood show, Colby kids also went to Atwood. And so we had a nice kind of mix and it's funny because actually there is a family from Colby that still goes to the Atwood show just because they love, you know, being a part of that group and they've made friends and right. that's something they look forward to. And, um, but, you know, now that we've grown, of course, in these five communities, it's usually mainly those kids in those communities, but it's open to, of course, other communities in that county or nearby, you know, we, we, we sneak okay. a few in, so. 
Right. And and anyone that wants to participate can be a part of the show. We do hold auditions, of course, for casting, you know, leads or speaking parts, singing parts, that kind of thing. But anybody, anybody um, in, in youth that wants to participate, we, we want them to be a part of it. So, That's cool. and it's a free program for all of the kids there. You know, we, we work really hard on getting grant support, um, donations from businesses and individuals. And we're so grateful for all of that support. Um, to make it possible for the kids to participate for free. Um, we do a lot of fundraising and, you know, underwriting through the grants and other, other venue or other avenues of right. financial support. And you said you'll take a show and condense it. Like who's doing that? Who's doing the actual composition? Of so, a- yeah. So, well, we purchased the rights from Music Theater International or MTI. They're one of the big publishing houses okay. that owns the right or you know manages the rights to show so they've actually done all that work so it's great oh, okay yeah cool. we don't have to do that <laughs> so no we get a box that's got all of the all of the scripts and what's cool with this because it is geared towards kids and education you can add a lot of neat components to it we never have time to add uh, uh, you know a lot of like the extra homework stuff that you could do because it's it's geared towards schools to do as well mm-hmm. as community but um the kids get to keep their scripts which is neat and um um, they had CDs, but of course, everything is now pretty much uh, digital online. So we can send out links that you can download, like the learning tracks and, oh, and cool. that kind of stuff for the music for kids to practice at home. And, and that's something, you know, we definitely, our shows, uh, we rehearse basically just an hour a day, Monday through Thursday for about six to eight weeks. So if you do the math, that's not a lot of time together. And so we really require the kids that got to go home and they've got to get their lines learned and they've got to mm-hmm. work on their songs and they've got to work on their choreography and staging and all of that kind of stuff. Cause the actual contact time together is very limited because we as directors are traveling Bonnie, you know, is traveling to three towns in a day and I'll do my two towns and, and uh, you know, we just don't have a lot of time. And I'll admit when Bonnie told me that was the structure, I about, you know, had a cow because I had directed some shows with Hayes community theater and, it was, you know, we did three hours a night, Monday through, Monday through Thursday, or maybe it was Sunday through Thursday. And, you know, <laughs> we were, we were, of course, really hard, lots of time together. And I love it. I love the rehearsal process. Um, and, and she said, you only get an hour Monday through Thursday. I'm like, what? How's that possible? But you hold them to a high standard and they deliver. So, but so I guess I'm, are you doing three shows in three communities at the same time? And you're, you are personally going into an hour rehearsal in one town, hour rehearsal in another town. Yes. With yes. three completely separate casts. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Bonnie's doing the three shows. I do too. She's a little crazier than I am, but <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, it is, it's a full different show. You know, this Atwood show, this one, Colby show, Goodland that sounds show. Like a lot of work. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of work and um, you know, a lot of traveling on the road, but mm-hmm. it, it's, it's just, it's fun. You know, it's our passion and um, you know, we enjoy it so much and, our big, our big reason, one of the big reasons, of course, of doing it is when we were growing up, there weren't opportunities like this out here. You know, you might occasionally have a community group doing some theater or different things, but maybe not, but not always able to do like a musical per se. And so we, you know, always had to travel out of town to do things. We traveled out of town to study voice. We traveled out of town to study piano often. And I definitely, for musical theater, I always had to travel out of town to do that. We weren't able at that time at my school didn't have the, the, the right, the teachers available to do, you know, the full scale musicals that is typical or had been typical. And so, you know, I went to, um, I went to Butler County community college in El Dorado for like show choir camp. And I went to Broadway at Bethel camp at, in Newton. And we wanted to be able though, to provide those opportunities for kids here. And because there's so much talent here and, and, you know, Bonnie had discovered it by also teaching music lessons all around the area. She, she still teaches, still does some traveling for teaching, but, you know, we, we knew there's so much talent out here and we wanted them to have opportunities that we didn't have. So. Yeah, that's really great. Um, it sounds like it's making an impact. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, and so do you do, uh, well, we're in your studio mm-hmm. right now. Um, and, uh, you teach music out of here now and you don't drive? Is correct. That yes. Correct? Yeah. You make them come to you. I do make them come to me now. So yeah, no, um, with, of course, you know, did all the traveling the first year, year and a half, and then COVID hits, of course, and um, we all, you know, stayed in place as we know. And so I did switch lessons to virtual through, you know, a Zoom format mm-hmm. type thing um, during the, especially during the shutdown, of course. And then once 
felt more comfortable coming back into the school year. I kind of followed the school model. The school was going to be in session with, you know, safety parameters and stuff. And so then I opened it back up to in person at that time. Um, but, you know, we were able to do lessons through Zoom. You know, it took a little adjustment for sure. It definitely was a little more exhausting because it's just, you know, as the teacher, especially with voice lessons, you're really trying to tune in and listen and there's lags and some, you know, right. some delays and stuff. So it wasn't always the most effective, but, you know, it was still at least providing that offering during the crazy and certain times. And, you know, we were able still to make music, which was that's the most important thing was just, you know, making the music and having that interaction, I think. So, but, um, so, you know, I did the virtual, all virtual, then we were able to go back to in person that wanted to. And at that time, you know, I was, I had enough students, you know, coming in person and a, a handful that were still, I think I had like five that were still virtual, um, some from Colby and some from elsewhere. And um, so I had enough students that, you know, I was paying my bills. So that was right. good. And then, you know, now I'm, I'm all just back to in person at this time. So, right. it, you know, it, it, nothing will ever replace in person, but it's, it's so interesting because there were, you know, a number of teachers out there in the world that had do virtual lessons even before the pandemic. And then we all had to learn how to do it. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, it's still, it is a viable model for some, but if I don't have to do it, Right. For sure. I'd rather do it in person. And are your students all grade school, high school, older, any adults? Uh, so um, mo most of them are, yes, most of them are young um, and, you know, beginning students. Um, I mainly have beginning piano out here. I don't have right. a lot of voice students, but I do have a couple younger voice students right now. When I was in Hayes, I mainly just taught actually voice lessons and mainly junior high, high school kids and had a couple piano lessons. So it's been kind of interesting to flip to the other side and primarily have piano students. Um, but yeah, most of them are all youth, grade school, um, middle school, a couple. And then I do have a couple adults, or I have my mom <laughs> is taking lessons again. And yes, I have another adult student that she comes over student. here. What's that? Yeah. She good yeah, she's good. yeah, she's a good student. She's, she, she's, she's very good. She, she studied, you know, when she was a kid and then um, had asked, you know, to, to start again. And, and so it's been fun working with her and so we, we were on break for the holidays at the moment, but <laughs> we'll get back at it together in the new year. But I mean, I take students of all ages, um, you know, it's fun. And, you know, some of it is just, again, it's just about making the music. Right. So, but the kids, it's fun, you know, in the piano, I'm definitely all about, you know, we got to, you know, learn our notes and know how to read music. And because it's just music is so cool because it's a whole nother language. And, you know, it's just, that's another amazing skill to have. And, um the great thing with piano, and I just always highly recommend piano for anybody that wants to study any music, is you will hopefully get that good foundation of learning to read music, having, you know, some of the theory um, behind music, which is really important. And and the, the piano encompasses the whole mind and body and soul, because you are literally using all of your body to play, all of your senses, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's an all-encompassing instrument. And again, just gives you a good foundation for music in general, that then you can advance or adapt to any other instruments that you might want to learn from there. Are, are you seeing <laughs> demand for it? Because it feels like just observing the culture that like there's more guitar and maybe even less music in mm -hmm. general than when we were kids. Um, and I was wondering if piano was going out of style for a thing that students are interested in. Right. No, I mean, you know, I had, I wasn't quite for sure what to expect when I came back, but no, I mean, peep, there's still an interest, which is good. And I mean, you know, cause again, the majority of my students are piano, they're all young. Um, and yes, there is definitely an interest in guitar and I wish we had some guitar teachers out here because they would be booked. We, you know, really? lots of kids are always, and adults, you know, are interested in guitar. I wish I knew guitar. I tried to teach myself it in high school for like a day. I gave <laughs> up. <laughs> My fingers are too fat for the, the strings. But um, no, I think there is an interest just because, you know, it's, it's not here, but they see it in other ways and um you know oh you know i want to try that and or you know maybe a parent had done it and is, is encouraging them to try it and at least learn and so that's fantastic i've always been fortunate i have always had really good students that generally i have a couple that you know uh, you know that don't want to always be there but mm -hmm. most of them do and you know they they do practice and you can tell and when they haven't practiced you can tell but it's okay <laughs> for sure been there done that <laughs> well so you um are a performer you are vocalist and have performed in groups yourself uh what is the uh like was it just a natural 
uh, evolution from performing to teaching, or did you have to learn how to uh, teach what is you already know inside your head? Mm-hmm. No, yeah. Um, I mean, I think yes, some can like take it naturally, but you. De- I think if you're gonna charge somebody, <laughs> you should know a little bit more of the <laughs> the um, pedagogical, you know, approaches to things. And so um, at college, you know, for my degree, we had to take a vocal pedagogy class. So, you know, learning how to teach singing. Oh, cool. So, which was very, you know, good and important. And um, during that, you know, we, like, I think maybe the first half of the semester, it was all, you know, about the teaching and mechanics and stuff. And then we then had to get a couple students as our guinea pigs that we taught lessons to and had to film them and they were reviewed by the teacher and stuff. So you had kind of that men- that mentorship um, component to it. So, um, I, and I mean, it was a natural fit because I knew that voice and music is what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. but definitely having that that educational foundation was important because especially with the voice, you don't want to, you never, it's like a doctor that the Hi- Hippocratic Oath or whatever, you know, do no harm. <laughs> and you can't, you know, you can do harm to the voice and you don't want that to happen. Um, so make, making sure, you know, some of the, of course, the science and mechanics behind it all. And then piano, you know, um, I guess it's a little easier for beginning piano. And I will say that, you know, I'm definitely just a beginning piano teacher. You know, I, I will get you, I can get you to a certain level, but then I would definitely want to pass you off to, if you're really wanting to pursue it, to pass you off mm-hmm. to someone that is more qualified, um, and credentialed. Um, but you know, I, I have enough skill with the piano for what I'm doing right now. And and then just the musical and theoretical background with music theory and that kind of stuff that is, it's effective and I feel comfortable teaching at the levels that I teach. But like I said, I know then what are my limits and then would pass somebody on if needed. So. All right. Well, uh, tell me about, oh, sorry, I guess the other thing I was going to say though, when you do come, if you kind of switch from being the performer to the teacher, mm-hmm. it's great because you actually learn a lot more about, yourself as a performer and you realize oh yeah maybe i should practice a little bit more or i should do this and that so it's neat to always see the other side of things and of course you grow a deeper appreciation for those that are teachers or those that are performers and Mm. i'm just seeing everything from a different perspective is always helpful and is performing something that you continue to do or want to do in the future or do you like the teaching aspects now well it's funny i mean yes performing was always my favorite thing and all through growing up and through college and and then of course you know teaching i would teach just on the side as extra income um but then when i got um i was asked to direct shows at first i was asked to do music direction for shrek at hayes community theater i kept like putting them off they're like we need to we want you to direct show i'm like no i don't know i don't know if i feel comfortable doing that yet mm-hmm. and then i finally agreed and it was you know an amazing experience and so the next year i wanted to do it all and so i did the <laughs> stage direction and the music direction because you know type a personality control control for sure <laughs> so but it was also an amazing experience and and but it's also very it was also a very humbling experience because you know of course when you're on a performer or you're a performer you're on the stage everyone is seeing you um, when you're the director, you're doing all of the pre-work and everything, you know, ahead of time. Well, well, I mean, and with the performers, but it's just a different, you know, different feeling, different level. Right. And of course I was, you know, so proud of my performers, but then it's, you know, the performer in me was like, I want to be on the stage getting the applause. That applause is for me. <laughs> even, exactly. That's even though I was in the pit and, you know, conducting the, the orchestration stuff. Um, so, but no, but again, it's just that seeing how the other side lives, how the other half lives was a good experience in my development and growth as just a human in the, in the, in the world of music and theater and stuff. But um, to answer your question though, I'm currently not performing. I haven't done anything since 2018. I do hope to in the future. Um, I just been too busy (laughs) with other stuff. And, and I really, and I love, you know, I love the teaching side of things. And of course the directing of shows, I didn't direct a show last summer, but I am going to direct shows again this summer. So I'll have that fulfillment again. Yeah. which is good. Um, and then, yeah, down the road, of course, I'll eventually maybe do something, but I get, well, I guess I will say that I, I am singing a little bit on a new year's concert at orange, the new bar in Colby, um, with Scott Cameron, who's Bonnie's cousin. But Bonnie, during the years. Is, does she run the orange? Is that her, her? Well, sure. Her husband own it, but okay. her husband, Karloff, um, runs it. Okay. So yeah, they're downtown in Colby. So I will be doing a little bit. New year's Eve? New year's Eve. Yeah. Tickets still available? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't All know right. if they're selling tickets. I don't know how it's working exactly, 
okay. need to figure that out. <laughs> so, I guess I'll be right. there. And so there's going to be a New Year's doing show a little bit of the singing in uh, Colby. Colby, Kansas, yeah. where anyone can come out and see Carl. Yeah. yeah. And what is the show? Is it a um, cabaret? What's happening? Yeah, I mean, kind of a cabaret, I guess. It's it's mainly Scott Cameron, and he's known in Colby um, and the area. Fantastic vocalist and. He, um, has kind of a, a wide variety of songs. There'll be some standards and um, a little bit of Broadway and then some pop music, popular music, which would be kind of cool. He's pushing me out of my comfort zone, making me do a little bit of um, backup background and some popular music that I just, it's fantastic music, but it's just not my genre. What is your genre? And my genre is 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 Broadway show tunes, musical, okay. musical theater, um, classical music, of course. And then, you know, in college, you know, study like art song and, that kind of stuff, which that's you know singing the the songs of the different languages, right. and that kind of stuff. But so def, to... definitely like show like I'm a, I'm a musical theater standards kind of person. Right. I'm not a poppy person. <laughs> I, I try to be, but it's Douglas Avery. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't quite mix with some with... of those those new popular songs. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to grow. I yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> that's a, that's and that's definitely a theme of my life. You know. It's just, you know, and I don't know, my reflective moment over the last three years is, you know, is has been a lot of growth and, you know, stepping out of those comfort zones. And obviously it hurts, and it, you know, it's like, oh, in the moment. But once you get through it and take that leap of faith, I always joke with my friend Bonnie, she will, she's so good at getting, she should be a life coach because she's has lots of good advice and is very, uh, persuasive and motivating but she will get you to the edge of the cliff and then go <laughs> and you just have to flap your wings and luckily lift lift has happened so far haven't plummeted yet but uh yeah you just it, it's definitely there's been a lot of things in my life over the last few years i've been like that and it's been good because i of course needed it and it all has come at the right time but in the moment i hate it <laughs> But right. once I've had time to process, I'm like, okay, yeah, that was worth it. <laughs> Thanks for persuading me to do that. Well, when you were growing up, was you said that you traveled for music. Did uh, is that just something you fell into? You like you just started learning piano when you were a little boy, or what happened? Yeah, well, so I was lucky when I first started piano that there was a teacher, Carol Cleaver, came from Grainfield to Hoxie and would teach um, in the basement of just a, uh, some person's home here in town. So I started in fourth grade with her and studied um, until sixth grade. And then she retired. And then I was able to get into Sharon Chris's studio in Colby. So that's when the traveling started was um, going over to Colby for piano lessons. And it was nice because there was a group of us that would go. And so our parents could kind of carpool, take mm -hmm. turns and that kind of thing over the years. And so I studied with her all throughout high school for piano. And then my freshman year, though, I also then that's when I started voice lessons in uh, at Hayes, at Fort Hayes State. When you were so, freshman in high school? I was freshman in high school. Wow. Yeah. So there I must have some natural talent there. Yeah. Some, yeah. Somebody saw it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, so I think like Monday nights we would drive to Colby or no, to Hayes for piano lessons and Wednesday nights were, yeah, or no, ah, Monday was voice in Hayes and Col Wednesday was piano in Colby. That's moms in Western Kansas. Yes. You got to drive your kids to the things they want to yes. do. Yes. Yeah. They can't wait till you get your driver's license and then you can drive <laughs> yourselves. So. Uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, what do you do for fun around here? Oh, gosh. Other, or do you have time for anything other than <laughs> your work being fun? That's a big, I mean, that is a big part of it, of course, is just all the work. And I, like, enjoy it, you know, of course. But, um, I mean, the one thing I will say is you, you can't say you're bored in a small town because... There's a lot of things going on. You just need to go out and take advantage of it. So I will just say that I always have the time to take advantage of it. Or when I have the time, I'm tired and I just want to Netflix and relax. But, um, you know, we're lucky here in Hoxie. Right across the street is The Elephant. You all should come check it out. Amazing restaurant across the street here. So, you know, definitely going out, treating myself or going out with friends to that. Of course, now that um, Orange is open in Colby, I've been hanging out there sometimes on Saturdays mm -hmm. with Bonnie and Karloff. And um, otherwise, I mean, it's hard to say because when I first moved home, I was literally just working, you know, nonstop. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit. And so, you know, it's like you couldn't really do things. And then now I've also just been kind of so busy. But, um, you know, 
on occasion, I've gotten out of town or what have you, or go, you know, try to go to some of the other towns. I just this week, I, I had to drive to Bird City for something for the foundation, and honestly, just getting out on the road and driving, and it was, well, it was it was yesterday, so the day after the crazy Wednesday windy mm-hmm. day, it was, and you know, it was more peaceful yesterday. It was just nice to <laughs> get out and just drive in the country in the country, yeah, and uh, enjoy the the beauty of the the area. So. Um, but yeah, you know, Bonnie and I hang out as much as we can and yeah. then of course hang out with family and friends. I have three nieces and a nephew who live here and then another nephew that lives out in Colorado. Um, so, you know, I, I often help babysit when I can and hang right. out with them. And it's been fun being back near all my family during the pandemic. All of my family was home. My sister's family, um, the ones that are in Colorado now were actually home for a year or so. Um, and so it was neat to have all of us, oh, all of us together and, and hanging out with all the littles and, and whatnot. And, um, but definitely, you know, my, I've got goals of getting away and, you know, going and seeing friends back in Hayes and other things here in, the, in the, this, this next year. And, and then, but also, yeah, now also just, you know, trying to take advantage of more of the things that go on in the area, because there are so many things and all of the different communities. We've got lots of neat things going on. We know we grant yeah. money to it. And so <laughs> want to be able to take advantage of some of those events and activities. Yeah. Do you think people know about all of the things that like, does word get out? You think I was wondering this myself, right? If like something cool is going on in Hayes or Colby, you do kind of have to drive a little bit to yeah. get to all of the things. Yeah. I don't, I'm but I think people know. Right. I mean, I think, I mean, I think they do for the most part, but, or, you know, it just depends on the channel that it's communicated through. Um, but, but I think like driving is in our DNA. Like right. it doesn't mind, you know, it doesn't bother us. I mean, I personally hate to drive, but I, I will just, if I, I will turn on my podcast or I'll just drive in silence. It kind of becomes my therapy moments, yeah. but, um, but like, but having to drive somewhere is pretty easy. You know, we're lucky, you know, out here we're 30 minutes from every, from each other. Right. So you're, you'll always have a place to stop if you need to. So, right. It's just like a long uh subway ride in new york yeah exactly kind of the there you go yeah yeah so uh i've noticed like hoxie's downtown is you got the elephant that you just mentioned mm-hmm. and another quite a few kind of like you've got a good main street mm-hmm. and uh it seems like you are part of trying to build community in hoxie but it seems like it was already there mm-hmm. like do you have any thoughts on why and how they've been this community has been successful in terms of economic development and having kind of a thriving downtown and a rural community? Well, yeah, well, no, definitely we'll say yes. It was, it's all been there before me, so I can't take any credit for it. <laughs> but, um, and, and, and I, I have always commented to people, Hoxley has such an amazing downtown, like our downtown is full. And you do drive to some other communities and that's not the case. And, you know, of course, feel bad for them. But I think that trend is changing, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I think, um, in, because of community foundation support is a big catalyst for a lot of that. And, you know, just again, that re uh, what's the word, I guess, um, reinvigoration of economic development and, you know, supporting and, and all that, that, but um, no, I mean, I think what makes Hoxie successful is just there, there are some families and businesses that are multi-generational and like literally (laughs) multi-generational so that's been helpful and they're you know they're successful and and what they're doing and and, you know and passing that on from one generation to the next and also just you know um you know i think it risk you have to be a risk taker if you're going to be any kind of business entrepreneur what have you and and we've got people that are doing that whether they think it's a risk themselves at the moment but (laughs) you know they're just you know subconsciously doing that and we just added two businesses to Main Street here in the past year. Um, another one right across the street and one just up the block. And um, yeah, I, you know, we just, I don't know, we've got the right people doing the right things and, you know, they're doing well. And um, they're also extremely supportive of the community. I think a lot of them see the big picture of, you know, I've got my business, but my business is also reliant on other businesses and, you know, of course, the people in the community and or being bringing people into the community and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, we're very fortunate here. That's cool. Do you have any, like, big goals, medium or long term for either the Arts Council or uh, the Community Foundation? 
Sure. Well, so with the community foundation and economic development stuff, um, the big goal is is really getting economic development redeveloped <laughs> for us um, because we we actually have like a, a separate economic development board that was um, in action years ago and you know really hasn't been active and so wanting to and there hasn't been a p person in the position to do much the last you know however many years and so really wanting to get that activated as i go into full-time kind of splitting my time between foundation work economic development so the goal is restructuring that and you know you know <laughs> uh what's our you know our um keywords, you know, trying to have a strategic plan in place, so to speak, or at least our goal, we'll just call it goals for now, but get that developed and then, you know, assess what we can do, what we want to do, that kind of thing. The big part of it for me, of course, is I want to, you know, visit with the businesses and, you know, see where they're at, what resources they might need and how we can get them connected. When I first started in this and was getting connected to various resources from the state and, you know, other nonprofits that support businesses and development and education, all that stuff, I was blown away. There are so many resources out there. And I think a big part of it is then just being the aggregator for it. And so that's kind of been a big part of what I've done the last few years is just being that person that, you know, all the information comes and then I can get it sent out to everyone or the people that I think it would be most best suited for, you know, that kind of thing. So making sure that our businesses and, and the community know about the resources that are out there to help them with their businesses, whether again, it be with startup, you know, um, professional development, funding resources, that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. so continuing that is a big part of it. Um, wanting to bring some more educational and training opportunities to Hoxie to be actually hosted. We did do a, a website or a Facebook training through Fort Hayes' Management Development Center earlier this year that was successful. And so my goal is to at least try to have three to four events like that in Hoxie. So our businesses don't have to travel out of town to, to be able to, you know, participate in that kind of stuff. And then right now, of course, we are working hard on childcare. Uh, you know, it's an issue that is um, of huge need in Hoxie with just, we need more capacity, you know? And so we've got a committee that's working on that and we've, we've got some ideas in mind and are really moving forward. And so just hope to continue to get that project going and uh, underway and finalized at least in one stage of its life. And then, um, then with the foundation, you know, we also kind of we spearhead all of the different strategic doing projects. So we've got child care, of course, is one of those. We've been working with the um, high school auditorium on upgrades. We had just this past year got all of the sound and audio visual updated, uh, equipment updated, and then we'll be working on stage lighting, getting that all replaced. And then we have um, one of our pool parks in town, the pool park. We've got some ideas of, of updating it. So just continuing to hopefully make progress and um, successes with those projects. And, um, you know, the foundation also, you know, making sure we continue to reach our goals with the, the match month campaigns. And um, I hope to get the YEC program going again in the school. It's the youth entrepreneurship program. That's mm -hmm. um, It's a program through Network Kansas that when I first came, we did it that first year and it was successful. And then second year we did it, you know, and then that led into the pandemic. And so I, we've kind of had a break and we've got a new administration at the school this year. And so I want to give them a year to get settled and then <laughs> go see about going back into them and, and uh, try to get that going. Because that's, I think, an amazing program that, is so important and a great way to start that idea in our youth to know that hey you know if you if you like your community you know while you're growing up and you know yes go away go to school whether it be at a votech community college um, university or you go and work what have you they're all viable options and then if you want to come back and open a business or take over a business you know get that i get those those seeds planted early on i think it's really cool so right. definitely want to get that going and grow grow is one of my big goals um, here. And then um, Arts Council, of course, is we want to continue to hold our festival and grow it. We do have intents this summer of adding an adult musical as well. 
Oh, cool. So Bonnie will actually direct four shows. <laughs> and um, so we want to try to get that going this year. And then we want to try to add back some of our programming that we just, you know, halted because of pandemic and also just our own lack of bandwidth um, in our personal lives. But um, we're hoping to maybe get back to um, our community choir going again here in Hoxie and then maybe eventually in Colby. As well, as well, and then um, maybe adding some, then uh, like, so we would do like the summer musical and then in the fall or winter, we would do a play or something fun like that. Mm -hmm. So just trying to get some of that going and then eventually some of our um, like art workshops or classes, again, get those going and the different art walk events. We typically do those in the summer art walk, but yeah, just getting back to some of that programming that had been halted. Our long-term lofty goal with the Arts Council is creating MISFA, which we love our acronyms. So that's the main, that's the Main Street Fine Arts Academy. And the idea of that is having satellite studios in all of our different communities where it'd be a physical structure. And we have this amazing idea that Bonnie came up with of like grain bins that are converted into little units that would serve as a teaching location. So a studio for teaching lessons and also have a little apartment in it that, um, so first they'd be for teaching year round. We'd hire mm -hmm. teachers that would be traveling from town to town um, during the week to teach piano. Maybe you've got 10 students in Hoxley, 10 here, so on and so forth. Guitar, that guitar teacher, art teachers, they would all cycle through those different places. And then depending during the year, maybe they would you know, live in one of the units or at least in the summer, we'd have those um, units available for our interns who may need housing, that kind of thing. So that's kind of our big lofty goal uh, down the road for the Arts Council is creating that that academy of less, you know, providing lessons in all aspects of wow. music and the arts. So that's pretty cool. Long -term yeah, so we're, yeah. So we're looking for funders for that. So if you're <laughs> out there, well, come find me. <laughs> okay, so I have seen on social media, a picture of like, a house inside of a grain bin. Mm -hmm. So this is the, but I was like, I, that's photoshopped. I didn't know if it was real. Oh no, yeah, so this is the thing so that people real. are doing. Oh yeah, oh okay. yeah, yeah. So and would you be looking for like, you need a landowner who's like, ah, you can use one of my grain bins, or are you going to build a grain bin and then turn it into this? We, we would probably build one and turn it in. But okay. if we had a landowner that wanted to donate the land to put it on, and you know, donate a grain bin that they're not using, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. All so right. again, it's a big long-term goal, but those would definitely be parts of it. Okay. For sure. For is sure. someone doing this out there? Or is this like, like, are you, were you inspired by a, some project in Ohio? Um, I, well, I don't know exactly. Or are we going to be the first? I think we're going to be the first. Okay. With our goal. I mean, the people that have been doing the grain bin homes have, have already, you know, we can't right. take any credit for that. <laughs> Other than we're converting them to commercial and <laughs> residential use. Right. So. Well, you mentioned like people donating a piece of land. I know one of the Dane Hansen's initiatives that they're encouraging community foundations to do is to promote this Keep Five in Kansas, mm -hmm. where they say, hey, if you would put part of your estate for people that have generational wealth, like you said, um, where 5% could pass to a local foundation when uh, someone in the family dies, then that's able to become part of a fund that could you know, grow in perpetuity, kind of like the Dane Hansen Foundation did when it started. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you've had any uh, success in, um, you know, are people doing that, I guess, in in Sheridan County? Sure. So, so, so that is definitely, yes, something big that we'll be, that we are working on and continue to work on. We do have one for sure gift. I, I can't, I won't announce the name yet, but yes, we do have, we do have our first planned gift, okay, cool. which we're very excited about. Um, they'll be part of what we're calling our legacy society. So it mm -hmm. is, it is um, individuals that are leaving, like you say, a, a percentage of their estate to the foundation. Um, and we have another one that we're working on right now. And yes, that's definitely something I hope to continue to grow. Um, for Sheridan County here in the future. So I'm happy you brought that up. Thank you. Are, have you found in terms of people making large con contributions like that, or just in general, um, any sort of lessons learned on how to connect with people and show that the stuff that you're doing is meaningful to them? Well, I think, you know, of course, the, the most important thing is to just listen to them. What's important to them mm -hmm. first. And then, you know, then, yeah, then we can connect them or show them, you know, well, this is what we, we've been able to help support through our funding. And this is how your gift then could replicate that 
and you know in the future and again i think that idea of perpetuity is the just the cool awe-inspiring thing to really wrap your mind around um you know we mm -hmm. were at the the hansen training this past summer and the speaker talked about the perpetuity and perpetuity is until the world ends <laughs> so you know if you want to get dark that's what perpetuity is or you know right. so that's kind of cool in my opinion so you know having these resources and being able to provide for again the betterment for so long and literally leaving your legacy like you know mm -hmm. yes you know um you'll pass but your your memory your legacy will live on for perpetuity i just that just is so cool to me so yeah that's uh I think it's meaningful. Yeah, it really. Meaningful yeah, people. absolutely. Um, well, any looking back over just the last few years, your work with the Main Street Arts Council or the Community Foundation or anything, any fun success stories, good war stories <laughs> from uh, your experience in life the last few years? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I definitely, and I, you know, kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I think the biggest success that I feel for me with the Arts Council especially was you know, getting involved in that first year in 2019 with the Main Street Summer Theater Festival, you know, Bonnie had taken it from one town to two to three and, you know, was doing it on very little money and, and then just prayers that, you know, people would buy tickets and help make sure expenses were paid for. And, you know, she might get a little compensation for it um, in the end to really, you know, putting together a budget and, you know, making sure that we, are you know we are going to raise the amount of funds that we need to cover what we believe the expenses will be and those expenses actually including compensation for our directors for our choreographers we we use different dance teacher we partner with dance teachers in the area who have, have served as our choreographers for the shows which is fantastic and making sure they're compensated we're compensated as directors we also had added, Bonnie had added um, the year before I came, an internship program. So we had student interns who um, basically serve as, you know, assistant student directors. And they were giving them the full experience of what it takes to put on a show from, you know, the auditions to concept to literally building sets and uh -huh. putting together props and that kind of thing and, and getting everything organized and running rehearsals. And so making sure that's a paid position as well. And you know, that was a big part that I have to admit, you know, it, it took my mind a, a second to come around to the realization that I am, you know, I am worth it. I, I've been educated and <laughs> you don't have, and to have experience and you time, don't right? have to volunteer all the time. No, volunteering is great. And yes, you need to do that. But also there's a line with depending on what the work is, you need to make sure that you're compensated and, and just creating that idea of, you know, our own little arts industry out here, I think is really important. And, you know, showing the the value of the arts in economic development, you know, it, everything, everything is tied together. Everything is relied yeah. on each other, but making sure people are aware of that, I think is really important. And, you know, as we were getting everything organized with that budget, it did take me a second to be like, well, can we really, you know, pay ourselves? Yes, we can. And that's important. So, you know, we took it from, you know, maybe she had like a $15,000 grant, I think that previous year, we took it to basically a $100,000 budget in 2019 with, um, you know, everything that was involved, making sure we had staff paid, we had money for the the rights, the costumes, prop sets, we, we fundraised, you know, most of that through um, grant applications to the various community foundations, Hanson Foundation, of course, mm -hmm. um, and then business sponsors, all, all of that kind of stuff, doing some additional fundraising efforts like bake sales, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the end, of course, the end of the day is the ticket sales. And we always say that, you know, when you buy a ticket, you are helping make this program free for these kids on stage. So, you know, it's your contribution in, in essence and um, just right. supporting the arts and again, helping grow that kind of arts industry out in the area, even if it's just short term for the summer, it still has effect. You know, most people, if they're going to go see a show, they often go out to dinner. They want to treat themselves, have fun. Or in the case of when we had people traveling to different communities, of course, they're going to maybe have to get gas somewhere. They're, if, they're, if it's Colby, you know, maybe they're going to go to Walmart or Dillon's or hopefully go visit some of the downtown stores or, mm -hmm. um, you know, businesses in whatever community they're in. So, you know, at some point, we'd love to do like the economic impact just to see um, but, you know, as we grow into our loftier goals and then the Fine Arts Academy, I mean, that is the, the, the arts industry. If we've got paid professionals teaching and, you know, just lifting up the arts in the area, you know, that's definitely a big part of all of that. That is um, making sure that the arts are 
we want to make sure that the message is out there that the arts are vital and important and they have an effect. Yeah, that's great. Well, from what I can observe, you really are doing what makes your soul shine. It, yes, absolutely. Yes, I know. In Hoxie, Kansas. It's Hoxie, Kansas, the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> it is the center of the universe for the people that live here. Yes, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for talking with me today. Um, you're an inspiration, I think, to your community. And I'm uh, you know, thankful for your leadership in the foundation and uh, your mentorship as I sort of get my feet wet in the same kind of business. Absolutely. So, thank you. Great to see you today. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Uh, that's it from Hoxie, Kansas with Carl Pratt at Seeking Context.